Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. So today I wanted to go ahead and recap uh, day one of basically our fresh start. So day one went pretty slow. Uh, we had so many people in the chat, a lot more than I'm used to. So definitely thankful that all of you guys were there because of this massive increase in chat activity. So we went pretty slow today. In fact, we didn't even finish the campaign. We're I think around Act 7 or Act 8. Now, what I want to go ahead and talk to you guys about is kind of where I'm going to be going from here. So we dropped like maybe three Chaos Orbs, nothing really that crazy. I mean, the character is not really very strong. Um, due to popular requests, I will have a POB of the character in the comments. I don't normally do this. And what I'm probably going to do is make a little document because um, I don't really want to put this on my website because it's kind of weird, right? I want to basically just have the, the POBs organized by day so people can see the progression by day. And then when it's all maybe done, I can link it somewhere. Anyway, though. To talk about some chase items I want to aim for and some basic items, with my first couple of Chaos, I'm going to probably purchase, so most of these I imagine are one Chaos unique items. You guys have played the build, you're very familiar with these items, right? Rise of the Phoenix is a shield that gives us 5 max all res. This is very good on Chieftain specifically because 5 max fire, sorry, 5 max fire res turns into 5 max all res, right? So this is typically my shield of choice, a uh, very early game until... I'd say about, I hit around close to 90 max res, and then it would it would really be the pivot into Dawnbreaker, uh, and then it would be Dawnbreaker into a Shaper Shield. Um, but specifically for this run, I might skip the Dawnbreaker and the Shaper Shield and go Svalin, but I don't know yet. This is something you'll have to see. I gotta see the prices of everything because I have no currency right now. Uh, Kikizuru Ring is just a nice ring overall. It gives a Plethora of life regen gives a little bit of dexterity. Um, it reduces the effects of curses, which is nice because of like vulnerability kind of screws you over. Temp chains makes you go slower, and feeble makes you do less damage. It's really a nice ring. I would say I don't really replace Kikizuru um, until maybe yellow maps, and that's only because I'm trying to get amethyst rings with chaos res. So we're gonna do amethyst uh, with chaos res, and I'll probably look for a fracture. I'm not going to specifically say what fracture because a lot of people are uh, scalping items to make this more difficult of a journey. So I will, uh, you're going to have to be on the stream if you want the, the best info here. Now, Pyre Ring is a really nice ring for damage. Alternatively, you can just go with two Pyre Rings. You don't have to do a Kikizuru and a Pyre, right? But Pyre Ring gives you up to 80% burning damage, which is close to about like four skill points on the tree. I would say that's a pretty hefty amount. And I would use Pyre all the way up until I get some form of ignite pro lift once you get ignite pro lifts for your hinakora this is why you want ignite chance you don't really want pyre anymore because pyre will start to cause an issue with the interaction basically pyre can eliminate the corpse which can prevent the explosion from spreading and then of course talking about the 1c items immortal flesh i'd say immortal flesh is probably one of the top priorities since you can use it at level like 50 so i could use this in the campaign again these ones too these are like level 20 um, but the Immortal Flesh stays on the whole time. It doesn't really get replaced like these shields, right? Immortal Flesh really only gets replaced super late game. Now, as for my first chase items, so first chase items would be like, I drop a Divine Orb, I make like 20, 30 Chaos, you know, whatever it is, right? I, I can buy something that is like, that, that I'm aiming for. So the first thing is probably a six link Armor ES base. Um, the reasoning for Armor ES, it's very easy to Chrome for RF because it's primarily blue and red. And we use you know a total of five blue and red links and then one green which is swift affliction so this is a very easy way to get a very cheap six link and then that gets replaced with cloak of flame but i don't see that happening today that'll probably be much later unless we get you know some lucky divine drops uh fan the flames cluster jewel this is something that is mandatory in my eyes the reason why i'm not going for gloves right away is because i have to self craft everything it is infinitely more expensive to go after say a hundred embers and try to get fan the flames on, uh, you know, um, ignites you and flick spread in an AOE versus buying the base for a cluster jewel for two chaos and using maybe a hundred alterations to hit it. I don't know exactly how rare it is, but it should not be that rare at all. The downside is this is going to take a shit ton of points on the tree because I'm going to go into a cluster jewel just for fan the flames. But I think this is fine because eventually when I expand into the large cluster jewel, um, then I will want this anyway. So I think this is the best way to get it right away, and that is what I will do. There's a third option, which is Barracks Respite. I don't know the price of Barracks, but this is always a third option. So another thing we want to aim for is a good Scepter. 
I do love using a one property scepter, you know, literally picking one off the floor and crafting fire multi or something, but you know, that's only going to get us so far. So a minion crafted scepter is our way to go, where basically I will look for uh, fractured damage, and then after I get that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and use my minion essence so that I can guarantee a two property item, and then I will craft the third mod. So two property item is, you know, you basically have one stat that's fractured, and then you're crafting an essence with the other stat, and then your third stat you craft at the bench. Now a conch plus burn elder helm is also going to be something that's on the horizon should not be more than i would say 40 chaos at this stage in the game but not something i need for white or even yellow maps so definitely pursuing closer to red maps is when we're going to go with a conch burn setup now this is good and all but how am i actually going to generate this currency let's talk about that so um when we first start maps my atlas is going to look very similar to my league start atlas and that's because I'm imposing a new limitation that I I didn't really think about this because it was kind of second nature to me, but I will not be allowed to buy any maps, just like we're in SSF. So I will have to generate all of my own maps. I will have to generate my own T17s, my own unique maps, uh, my own maps for progression. So this means my initial League Start Atlas is going to be very similar to the one that I started with, but instead of going with Expedition, I'm going to replace all Expedition with Kirak nodes plus map nodes. Um, and this is so that I can use Kirak for my map completion, and the map nodes will help me sustain my maps and go up higher in tier. Now, into this right here, I am also going to add later, probably I would say when I'm in the red map territory, there's usually enough to put some other league mechanic on the starting atlas. And we will normally go Jun, although Jun, I don't actually have to put that much into it. Just putting like three or four points can get you your unveils. So we're going to do Jun plus uh, Harvest. Now, I told myself I don't want to do too much Harvest. But the thing is, Harvest right at the beginning, you can make a lot of currency off of it. Just because Life Force is, is basically like hotcakes. You just grab some Life Force, you list it on the currency exchange and bam you have some chaos i can use that starting chaos to literally get everything here and then i can pivot into the next thing i'm going to say that one of the main mechanics we want to farm with rf chieftain number one because i haven't done it this late into a league number two i don't ever do it for currency and number three the build is really good for it and it's going to be blight plus beyond plus delhi plus map mod effect plus map nodes. This, I think, is going to be our first initial atlas, and I will have, uh, you know, a command for this in my stream when I set it up. This is something I really want to do, and let me explain. So the Blight creates mobs. The mobs, I believe, get affected by Delirium. If they're not affected by Delirium, they fill up the Delirium reward bar, which creates more loot anyway. Those mobs in Blight that die can trigger Beyond. Beyond doesn't necessarily give you that much currency this late into the league, what it does do is it rolls the dice. You know, if you kill 100 mobs a map, but I'm killing 200 mobs a map, naturally I'm going to get something more rare before you, right? That's just kind of how that's kind of how it works, right? So I'm always a big fan of putting Beyond with League Mechanics that spawn a shit ton of mobs. So in this instance, it would be Blight. In the past, it was Harbinger. So we're going to use we're going to use this as our main form of currency. Also, the thing is, the later you get into a league, the more people want to stop doing mechanics like, say, Blight that give them money and want to do something like, I don't know, bossing, Ubers or whatever. But the reality is, is that more people are re-rolling, which means there's a demand for oils. More people are switching, you know, uh, they're just switching things in their build, so they need new oil. So oils are always sought after from Blight. And for people who don't know what that is, that is the process of anointing on your character. Anyway, so that is pretty much the rundown of what I plan to do here. I'm going to go ahead and just log into the character real fast. Don't mind that. There's nothing to see there, I promise. Definitely not playing Warcraft in the background. Okay, so here is our character. We are 66 right now. Actually, a little higher level than I thought. And we're just going to go over my gear, and I'm just going to go keep it for you guys real fast. So, fresh character... Stash tabs, we ended up settling with a currency tab, a mapping tab, and a fragment tab. And boy, does it feel weird to put div cards individually down here. So I may swipe for a div card one, but for now, we're just going to keep it like that. I'm also going to move my stash. I hate this river. My God, get out of here, dude. No, 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 no. We're going to be the bottom side of the forest encampment. No, I'm moving the tree by accident. Come here. 
Yeah, 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 let's get away from that river. Okay, so this is pretty much the character. At the moment, I literally picked up a weapon off the floor, crafted fire damage. We got shield charge, faster attacks, and life tap here. Next up, over here on my helmet, uh, we basically just have a dexterity roll with some regen. This is our trap in mind, fire trap, swift affliction, life tap setup. I got a shield that I picked up off the floor. It just gives spell damage. Doesn't actually work for our RF, but I needed the colors here, so that's why we're using this. Uh, I got a turquoise amulet with no modifiers. My chat asked me to transmute this, and there you go. It's now transmuted. That's actually awful. Let me just... Uh, that's actually still awful. Okay. Um, over here, we got a nice ring. It's got some life. It's got some all res. Uh, replace one of my rubies. Uh, over here, we have our RF gloves. So burn damage, righteous fire, Ellie focus, ink AOE. Uh, we got some nice flippy floppies over here. 25 MS tri res. Primarily fire and chaos is kind of cool. Uh, and then my belt. We pretty much just ID the 100 life belt. I forgot how big life rolls are at the beginning. Uh, and then, of course, my body armor here is just a life tap with flammability. And then blood rage and burning damage are just sitting here. Burn doesn't do anything. And then I got to start working on leveling some gems after. Um, the reason that lightning res doesn't do anything is if you play RF Chieftain, your res is pretty much capped for an eternity. So, I mean, that's, that's pretty much about it. So, anyway, if you guys want to keep up with the updates, we'll be streaming live probably 15, 20 minutes after this video drops. We're going to be continuing off right here, getting into maps today, setting up our atlas, a lot of good stuff. So, I'll catch you guys later on the stream. Don't forget to catch me streaming live every day with Sundays at twitch.tv slash box. Hope you guys had a wonderful time, and I'll see you guys all tomorrow.